I recently had the good pleasure of connecting with Jessica Lagarde. She is the co-founder of Women on Psychedelics. She's a writer. Well, I'll read you her entire bio. But it was really beautiful to be able to connect with a Latina in the psychedelic space who could share about her personal experience with magic truffles. She's able to do this safely and legally in the Netherlands. She's also a medicine guide, so she facilitates ceremonies and group projects, helping people heal, especially women-only spaces. So I think you're going to love this conversation, especially if you've been curious about how to destigmatize the use of psychedelics and mental health. Jessica Lagarde is a psychedelic-assisted medicine guide and integration coach for Psychedelic Insights. She's the co-founder of Women on Psychedelics and a freelance writer in the psychedelic space. Since 2020, she has been behind Whoop's content production, where her passion for storytelling, women's empowerment, and psychoactive substances all converge. Jess's goal as an advocate for psychedelics is to work towards the normalization of these substances and the end of stigmatization of women's mental health and women's drug use. So enjoy the conversation. It's time to upgrade your life. In this podcast and our live events and retreats, we explore ways to hack enlightenment by integrating ancient wisdom and modern neuroscience with transpersonal psychology. From plant medicine and psychedelics to breathwork, mindfulness, and neurofeedback, my guests and I will shine a light on the unique capacity that we have to use our conscious mind to evolve individually and collectively as a species. Tune in each week on your favorite podcast player or the Pennington Media YouTube channel for interviews and discussions about holistic healing of trauma and adverse childhood experiences, burnout recovery, and intentional wellness. Jessica Lagarde, thank you so much for joining us on this Conscious Evolution podcast. Oh, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm really happy to be here today and have a great chat with you. Mm, I'm looking forward to this conversation because I have been following women on psychedelics for, I don't know, maybe the better part of a year and just loving hearing all these various stories of people sharing what they've been going through. And I'm still working on sharing one of mine. Um, yes. <laughs> But what, tell me a little bit about what inspired you and your co-founder to create Women on Psychedelics. Uh, yeah, basically we started this project during the pandemic times in August 2020. And the reason for that, well, it comes from a few different things, right? Like I have my own personal story and my personal healing journey with psychedelics that uh, really kind of put me into that direction. Uh, and a lot of it was related, you know, to a mother wound that I have and the relationship uh, with my mother. And basically, that's kind of like uh, what kickstarted my, my work with women. Uh, specifically for this platform, but as well with Tian, our co-founder, uh, we got together and we were both passionate about uh, psychedelics in general, and we thought there were not enough resources out there uh, that were, you know, written or made specifically for women and by women. And the more research we did, the more we actually realized that um, there were not a lot of uh, recognition uh, to women that were working on the field uh, for many, many years. And when we actually Googled these words, women and psychedelics, uh, most of the news that we would find was about uh, women being abused in ayahuasca retreats. Mm. So those, yeah, you yeah. can imagine, very frustrating to see. So we thought, well, uh, we do not yet work on this field, but we thought if nobody is doing it, uh, we can we can do it. We can start something like that. And basically, yeah, it all started as this passion project and it started to grow. And women from all over the world uh, kind of joined us uh, and we created, you know, this huge collaboration. Everything that is in the platform today is done through collaborations. Uh, women that said, oh, I want to share my story. 
oh, I want to share my story. I want to help you somehow. And that's how we got everything into place. Yeah, everything that you probably have been following throughout this year as well. <laughs> yes, and on Instagram as well. So if you don't mind, would you share a little bit about of your, your own personal journey? You mentioned a mother wound, which I can relate to, and I have a feeling that will be which story I share on your platform. Um, I found that sitting in ceremony with ayahuasca, sitting in ceremony with psilocybin mushrooms have been really helpful for me healing the wounds of my childhood. So I'm super curious to know mm. which of the sacred medicines helped you uh, as you started exploring psychedelics. Mm. Uh, yes, uh, I would say the sacred medicine that was the most life-changing for me until this day is uh, magic mushrooms or magic truffles uh, because they are legal here in the Netherlands uh, where I live and uh, those are the same medicine that I work with uh, in a professional way as well. But in my own personal healing journey, um, I had a kind of a difficult childhood uh, that had a lot of different traumatic situations happening at times. And I grew up being raised by my grandparents and my mother would come in and out of my life. Um, and that was a result from many years that she did suffer with drug addiction. And uh, when I was, yeah, nine years old, I also lost my father. So that all of that resulted in a very huge abandonment wound <laughs> that uh, I carry like with me until today and is one of the main things I have been working with psilocybin right now uh, to have a better understanding of. And yeah, I specifically related to the mother wound uh, and this abandonment wound. Um, I've seen very recently when I attended to a woman only retreat, how that plays out. And it was, you know, sitting with the medicine in a woman only container um, that was a very nurturing and safe container uh, in a way that I have never experienced before with other women around me, because for a long time I was not aware, but I didn't perceive, you know, a sense of safety and trust for another woman due to this model wound. And uh, yeah, very recently in the ceremonial uh, setting and working with the medicine, I could see these things very clearly and from a different perspective. And I noticed that with that as well, that a, big, a part of me is longing for that bigger connection with other women and to feel safer in those spaces. So that's also why I started the work with women on psychedelics. That's why I do women only ceremonies. But another part of me still creates these barriers and walls that I'm trying to little by little disconstruct that. And I have been doing that, you know, for the past years. Uh, with normal talking therapy that goes, you know, until here. But I would say mostly mushrooms, they really touch me deeply in those aspects so far. Mm, thank you for sharing that. I can so relate to your story and I'm grateful to hear that you've got the resources and, mm -hmm. and I find that talk therapy helps. It's not enough on its own in my experience. Um, but it's wonderful that you have those sacred fungi allies. We are excited to invite you to an experiential retreat at Omega Institute called Reclaim Your Feminine Power for healing and empowerment. In this retreat, we will be giving you tools and group sharing, breath work, body work to help you reclaim the energy that you may have lost due to surgery, trauma, giving birth. And it's an exciting way for you to connect with other women in a safe space. I'm super excited about this. It's going to help empower you in all aspects of your life, personal, intimate, professional. You will reclaim that wild. Including your financial empowerment. And as Jill always says, you know, the womb is the home of our creativity. It's our feminine power. It's that Shakti flow. So you will learn how to operate from your womb and not your wound. So join us.
So can you tell me a little bit about the the retreats and and the medicine work that you facilitate there in the Netherlands? Uh, Yes. Uh, So right now, basically, I work here as a facilitator and integration coach. And I do that uh, for women on psychedelics and also in partnership with other organizations. So at the moment, I do that as a freelancer, mostly with Psychedelic Insights. And uh, the way we do it is like mostly with WHOOP, uh, we organize day ceremonies for women only. And that, that has a very specific setting because we also work with sound healing and we work with voice activation in the non-choir to really bring out, you know, this aspects of women being silenced for so long and really bringing the sisterhood back together. And through my, um, you know, other collaborations, like with Psychedelic Insights, is usually two or one sessions with clients. Uh, and I always work uh, paired up with a male guide. So we do have like both of the feminine and masculine energy or the mother and father archetypes uh, working together for this client. And these sessions are done as well, you know, in a very close intimate safe setting that usually works a lot for people that don't feel you know that they would feel comfortable enough in a group uh, ceremony or going to a retreat for a extended period of time so most of the people that come here they actually have never done psychedelics before and they are looking you know for healing in many different ways um and very recently, actually, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we just finished a retreat. There was a collaboration with uh, Psychedelics Today, and we, which we received part of the first cohort of students that they have from uh, their vital training. And our, I was co-hosting this retreat, and our team of guides, uh, we were doing the supervision of those learning how to hold space, but also of the people journeying. So it was a very interesting experience to have as well, because um, it was really cool to be able to connect with some people that are doing really incredible work in this field, and that come already to ceremony and to sit with the medicine so open. And so, you know, ready to be vulnerable and to connect with each other and to hold space for each other, that it was just like the most incredible (laughs) retreat experience I I had so far. (laughs) Oh, I bet. I bet. I Mm -hmm. recently came back from the the ketamine portion of my training Mm -hmm. with um, IPI. And you're right, that whole container and safe space, it's really a privileged space to be in, to participate in, and I'm sure for you to facilitate, that was wonderful. Exactly. I I see, I really see the healing power of, you know, group ceremonies and being together in a group uh, for healing purposes. So that's something that is kind of striking me more and more. And I feel like, yeah, I I want to participate more in those spaces, you know. Excellent. Well, perhaps (laughs) we can do something together since you're just next door. Um, Yes. (laughs) That has been my experience. You know, I've been facilitating group therapy for 20 years and mainly with people who've had substance use disorder or eating disorders. And there's something incredibly empowering and powerful about holding space and letting people share and be seen and be vulnerable in that safe space. And now to be able to do that with psychedelics on board or with breath work Mm -hmm. for people who aren't medically or psychologically cleared, um, it just accelerates this this process. And I find that even though I have a lot of people who want one-on-one with me, I really feel like the group container just adds such a beautiful healing dimension. I agree. I think uh, it's also because, you know, if we actually pick up and look, you know, most of the mental health conditions people are going through, you know, in the past uh decades is basically issues of disconnection and people are not feeling connected to themselves they're not feeling connected to each other they're not feeling connected to nature so it sounds really simple but when we can bring these aspects you know to the retreat experience and to the psychedelic experience this uh these things are enhanced and it really creates the healing that people didn't even know they were missing. 
yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah, you're so right. Especially as many of us have attachment wounds, there was family drama or trauma or dysfunction, and so by being able to be in community, we can get some of those wounds repaired. You know, exactly. just naturally. We yeah, there are things that we only heal in relationship to each other, right? Like we can only go this far if we are working on ourselves by ourselves. <laughs> But yeah, exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you and your co-founder are women of color. I, I'm curious to know, as a, another woman of color in this space, like what is it like for you to be Latina in the psychedelic space? <laughs> uh, it's interesting so far because I haven't seen many other Latinas in this space. Uh, I did uh, meet a few like uh, Oriana. Uh, she used to be my mentor right when i entered this space and yeah with tian is even less uh common because she's from singapore which is a country that it, it has extremely heavy drug policies and even when we started the project we were very careful of like how are we phrasing her participation in this pro in this project in this platform um so it's very interesting to pick up those differences and see how does that play out you know concerning where you come from or like your your the color of your skin but specifically when we are talking about women there is another layer there um uh, regarding stigmatization uh because you know women have like certain societal roles that we need to you know keep up to uh, or like, yeah, there a lot. There's a lot of things we learn, you know, from a young age that we should or should not do, or how we should or should not behave. So in the beginning, for me, uh, as I was entering this space, especially entering this space as a, an educator and like being a public figure, that I'm open to talk about this and I'm open to talk about my own. Uh, drug consumption and not only just regarding uh, psychedelics, but talking about, you know, drugs in general. Uh, from a few people, I, I saw like most people on my close uh, social circle are very accepting of it and really are curious and understand the work that I do. But that's also because, you know, I live in Amsterdam and at the end of the day, this is a very open-minded city. And as you, yeah, as you probably know, and this is also a country that when it comes to harm reduction and drug policies, it's quite, quite good on the ranking because we do have like a lot of uh, harm, redu harm reduction strategies implemented here for decades. And yeah, I, I think like in general, being a woman of color here in this space, in the context of like the Netherlands, I haven't seen many barriers, but the problem actually is I also haven't seen many other people like me. <laughs> and that's kind of like the point uh, that, yeah, I would like to touch into because I know that there are other facilitators and other people working in this space here that are not European or that can be Latinos or can be black women, but I just don't see much visibility uh, towards them either. Yeah, I certainly haven't seen that much in Europe at all. You know, it's in North America, we see a little bit more uh, representation, but hopefully that is changing. And I know another aspect of this work that is really important to you is encouraging activism. Mm -hmm. Can you tell, tell me a little bit more about what you would like to see happening with overcoming oppression and, and activism? Uh, yes. So for a period of my life before I entered the psychedelic space, I was more active regarding, you know, environmental issues and yeah, climate activism in general. And nowadays, yeah, I still, after getting quite frustrated <laughs> about doing that, uh, I saw more of like, okay, how could I have more of this role inside the psychedelic space? And the way I see that uh, happening for me, and I think that can happen for a lot of other people, uh, activism can also start with education, right? When we educate ourselves, when we educate others around us, when we educate them and actually give facts and real information or show them, you know, studies that are happening and really start to untangle 
you know, all the narratives and stories that the media played out uh, for many, many years about how psychedelics are bad and how drugs are bad and like slowly dis deconstruct that. Uh, so people are not afraid of it anymore or are not, you know, ignorant about it, but rather more informed so they can feel more open, you know, to curiosity and to learn more about it. So this is one form that I have uh, of doing so. And this is also how we do it through Whoop. Um, sharing stories, the, the storytelling part is a huge aspect of how I believe we can work, you know, towards the normalization of uh, drug and psychedelic use. Because when we have people from all different, you know, society, so social classes or you know, different countries or different ethnicities sharing about their personal healing stories or their personal recreational stories whatsoever. But how did that, those stories impact them or those experiences impact them in a positive way? This is how we also start to change the collective narrative about these compounds. Uh, so I feel like at the end of the day, Activism is a lot about, you know, educating and speaking up and sharing stories. I so agree with you. Um, I don't know if you knew this, but I, I run a publishing agency called Make Your Mark Global, and we mm -hmm. are launching a new book called Sacred Medicine, inviting people to share stories of all of the various medicines, not just psychedelics. So mm -hmm. that could be cacao, cannabis, tobacco. Oh, nice. Because I do feel like, like you, we need to destigmatize. We need to let people know what's possible. And um, especially for me, who someone who treats trauma, there are a lot of people that don't even know that there's another way to get mm -hmm. past PTSD and some of these long-held traumatic wounds. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Honestly, that's like the part that I see. It's one of the most important when we're talking about the movement and the psychedelic renaissance now going forward. Uh, we need to really get this baseline of education uh, in the right way. Yeah. So there will be, you know, no more mistakes like what happened in the past or also like not a, you know, the chance of having, you know, the movement blowing up yeah. and everything going completely wrong uh, yeah. one more time. So this is also like why I always find, you know, with education and really making clear what is the potential of working with these compounds, but also what are the risks involved? Yeah. What are the uncomfortable conversations that we need to have as well at the end of the day about it? Because not everything looks pretty in the psychedelic movement uh, right now, yeah. especially now when we are having a conversation about women and representation and all of that. So, but that is also the other aspect of making clear, like, for most people, psychedelics are not, you know, the end point, but they are more like the starting point of something yes. much bigger that can change their lives. And having this information very clear out there for people can also save, you know, a lot of um, troubles and a lot of, you know, misuse and all of that. Absolutely. And, and prevent some disappointment because a lot of people, you know, hear the great stories and they are, you know, success stories are possible, but there's a journey to get there. And psychedelics are not a magic bullet, but they can be helpful allies in the whole journey. And one of the things I love that you say is that when we embrace self-healing, that can be part of our outward action. If we want to mm -hmm. see change in the world. We need to, to heal ourselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I really see that as the start, right? Because it is it is a ripple effect, right? When we start to change, to see change in ourselves, this really ripples into our close relationships. And in our relationships, it will touch other people and this will, you know, continue to grow. But for a lot of people, yeah, I see like we do lead by example uh, in many, many ways. So that's, again, when we touch the point of the stories, if you want to talk to somebody about, uh, I imagine you have a good friend of yours that never tried psychedelics before, and you really think it would be good for this friend, but 
the best way to invite the curiosity of your friend uh, to try a psychedelic is to actually sharing your own experience with it and not trying to convince this person that that's something that they should do. Uh, so that's like where, again, I see the power of story is always there and the power of our own personal narratives and the impact that this can have in our surroundings and in the world even. So what is it you look forward to the most in all the work that you're doing with hosting retreats, facilitating one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one sessions, you know, co-founding this, this platform, Whoop, Women on Psychedelics Online and on Instagram. What inspires you? Mm. Well, because I do a lot of different things, <laughs> I, I do find uh, inspiration in many different aspects of this work. I find a lot of inspiration uh, in the educational work. This is definitely something that I wanted to be a big part of my future in this space uh, of like, you know, doing more podcasts or whether it is uh, webinars and really inviting people for discussions uh, about different topics that I find I can add something or add some value to it. Uh, another aspect that of my work that really inspires me as well is like when i write articles on for different platforms and not just for whoop because it's also another thing that i'm constantly you know trying to overcome some sort of uh internal blockage of like feeling oh am i writing this good enough or mm, imposter, imposter syndrome or anything like that so i see it's something that i'm constantly getting out of my comfort zone and proving to myself, yes, I can actually do this. Yeah, I actually do know enough. And this is something that I also see a lot, you know, in my facilitating work. And when it comes to the integration coaching as well, uh, and I think this is something that I actually try to replicate in different aspects of my life, this constantly getting out of my comfort zone, because that's where I see, you know, my own growth happens. And as you know very well, facilitating a session or a group ceremony with a client, we have to be prepared for the unknown. So this is already like being constantly a bit, you know, it, you are in a certain way in your comfort zone because you do have the tools and the capacity to do that. But in another way, you are putting yourself in scenarios that you don't know how they're going to develop uh, at the end of the day. But it, requires you know distrust on the process just distrust you know on your own capacities and i think like these are the things that inspire me the most because every day uh through these different aspects of the work i'm seeing that yes there's so much that i've learned so far well there's so much i need to learn but here i am and actually i can trust i can do this quite quite good you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, I totally know what you mean. I had that that same sort of leap from imposter syndrome, both with my writing, but also facilitating, because I started off my career as a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. And over the, the first several years of my life, actually became more of a therapist. Mm -hmm. And being able to facilitate groups when it was more educational, I felt very comfortable. But as, as I matured, I realized, wow, I really can facilitate all this transformational healing. And, you know, it's, it's a beautiful space when you get there. <laughs> yes, it, yes, it is. But it also, it's a very interesting uh, space to be because we do get there, but we, we still see that we are always the student as well. And we are Absolutely. always in a constant learning process. <laughs> yes, yes. That's what I see, like, basically, you know, with every client, there is something that I'm learning right now from this person about me as well. Like, if you see that, you know, in individual sessions, there's a lot of interesting things to observe when it comes, you know, to transference, counter-transference or projections or even like your own triggers or how this person might remind you of someone else and how do you deal with these things. So it's a constant, you know, self uh learning yeah totally totally well jessica this has been such a joy to connect with you i'm so grateful 
if people want to get in touch with you, of course, they can read and look at interviews and read stories at womenonpsychedelics.org. But if they want to reach out to you, where do you suggest they do that? Uh, yes, people can reach out to me as well uh, via email on womenonpsychedelics at gmail.com. Uh, I'm not sure you might add that to the description of the podcast as well, but then you can add also my personal uh, email to there. And another way is via LinkedIn. Okay. Uh, just looking for my name, Jessica Lagat. <laughs> okay. I will put all of those in the show notes. And yeah, I invite people to check Jessica out. Definitely check out the stories and profiles on women on psychedelics. And it would be awesome if you happen to be heading to Europe, if you want to go to the Netherlands <laughs> and experience yeah. magic truffles in a legal safe setting. Now you know. Mm -hmm. oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Andrea. You're welcome. I look forward <laughs> to meeting you in person. Oh, soon. yes. Yeah. Yes. And hope of hopefully working together as well, facilitating a woman only space in the future. That would be yeah. amazing. <laughs> I would love that. I am I am making my calendar for 2023 and we're doing um my my one of my medical partners and I, Dr. Jill Stalker, she and I are doing a women's retreat at Omega Institute in New York. Okay. No, nice. no mushrooms, mm -hmm. but um, helping women with womb trauma and reclaiming mm -hmm. their feminine power. And so maybe Amsterdam is the next stop. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I would definitely make this invitation to you, and especially because, you know, you are trauma informed. And more and more, I see like my limitations here with like which women I can actually help uh, with mm -hmm. my background and also knowing, you know, how far I can go. But yeah, if we would be able to create this container and have your assistance with it, I'm sure that we would also, yeah, create something magical. <laughs> yeah, that would be really powerful. And you're right, mm -hmm. you know, it's good for us to know our limitations. Um, I got a way more trauma training early in my career because just like you said, I realized I was up against my limits as a medical mm -hmm. doctor. But over the last you know, 15 years of additional trauma training and facilitation, I feel really comfortable. So that would be, that would be a gift, I'm sure. Yes, yes, right. that would be amazing. <laughs> All right. So watch this space, my friends. Jessica, <laughs> thank you again. I wish you thank many you. blessings and continued success. The same for you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning into the Conscious Evolution Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend, subscribe, and leave us a review and rating on your favorite podcast player. This helps us get the content out to a larger audience. And to watch the video version of the podcast, visit the Pennington Media YouTube channel. Want more info on how psychedelics may improve your mental well-being? How to choose a retreat? Or what to look for in a shaman? Get on the Psychedelic Curious email journal. The link is in the show notes and on my website, andreapennington.com. You can also sign up for my free masterclass series, where each month I take a deep dive into a topic in holistic healing, trauma recovery, self-love, resilience, and psychedelic-assisted therapy.